Hi guys, so this is the second part of my BTS video about the film Los Sueños that I released a few weeks ago. And if you haven't seen the first part, then I suggest you to go check it out right now. The first part was mostly about finding the right character, the research, uh, planning the shooting, and so there wasn't so much of a BTS in that video. However, this part is about filming of the film, so there's a lot of BTS, a lot of scenes from Buenos Aires, and uh, we're gonna start by me basically going over the pre-interview that I did with Anderson and about my thinking process of how I've put everything together. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so at this point, I did a little pre-interview with Anderson, as you've just seen, and I decided that I wanna tell his story. But because his story was a bit complicated, I kind of had to do a little bit of brainstorming and I used Milano to do that and I'm just gonna show you the structure now and explain you how I kind of thought about it. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be looking into the camera, I'm just gonna be looking at the Milano now. As you can see here, story brainstorming. I've put some basic criteria for the documentary here, uh, which is the topic, fixed gear bikes, story. Uh, I felt like Anderson's story starts with the moment where he lost his daughter because there was kind of a breakthrough moment. You know, at that point he decided he wants to leave Venezuela and he wants to uh, build his own life. And so we have it here, right? Main character Anderson, fixed beer, blah, blah, blah. And the conflict here is, well, the first con conflict is the tragic loss of his daughter, which I can't even imagine. Uh, then second one is him, you know, trying to improve his life in Buenos Aires. And then kind of we have another one, which is the death of his father and then getting over it. So there's quite a lot of tragedy in his life. And so here I did like a diagram, excuse my graphics because I'm not very <laughs> graphic person, but this is where I kind of show the start, you know, no father figure, moving to Buenos Aires, starts a new and make it on his own. Blue stuff is questions that I was asking myself and then I knew that I want to ask him those questions. So how important is this? Is he trying to prove something to himself? And then uh, we have the conflict, death of the father, solution, the, the cycling comes as a sort of a solution. Yeah, so basically these are just some notes that kind of helped me to make a better image of his story and it helped me to decide if I actually, if it actually makes sense to tell his story, right? It is important to, to have some sort of conflict in the story and the character needs to want something. This made me realize that I think I can tell his story effectively and from there on I started preparing the questions, which I also have here. I kind of was deciding on the interview style here and I wanted to do it without on-camera interviews and that's what I did, but obviously we filmed the interviews. And then down to the questions, mm, there's a few of them and as you can see, these are notes that I wrote to the questions that might then help me ask additional questions when I'm doing the interview. And then Luis, who was kind of a co-producing the project with me. He helped me to translate those questions uh, so we would have everything in Spanish because Anderson, he doesn't speak English, so we had to ask the questions in Spanish. And so once we had the questions, we've decided to schedule a shooting day with Anderson in his apartment. That was important for me because I wanted to film him in his environment and First, let's talk the technical stuff. So he sent me some videos and photos of his apartment. So I knew there's a big window. Uh, I used a sun seeker to check where the sun is gonna be around the time we're gonna be filming. And we've decided to schedule the shooting for the afternoon. Now, because there was a big window, I usually like to work with natural light if, if I can. I feel like it's something that I'm pretty good at. And so we use the window as a main source, as a key light. And there was actually a big white building in front of the window, which kind of reflected the sun inside. So it was already a pretty soft light. I'm not sure right now if we used a shower curtain to soften it, or if we just let it as it was, because the windows were a little dirty as well. And then uh, I had my small aperture and nanotube lights, which I, I think I used the nanotube just to give a little bit more interest in one of the shelves behind Anderson. Regarding the camera, I shot on my Lumix S1 with Canon 24mm f2.8 FD lens 
and I recorded the audio using a Levair, this one, it's the Rode Wireless Go. I've put it under his t-shirt and then I had a boom mic on camera, but I think we used the Levair audio in the end. Of course, shooting on the shadow side as you should. And I also have a three by three kind of a black backdrop material. And so I've put it on the shadow side of Anderson to give a little bit more of a contrast to the image. Now, a little bit about the interview. And one thing I have to mention is it wouldn't be possible without my fiance, Lau, because I don't speak Spanish. I understand, kind of, but I wouldn't be able to react to his answers as well as she was. So she was asking the questions. We did a little meditation in the beginning to kind of, you know, tune in, relax everyone. And then I was listening with my headphones. I was watching the camera. And so I knew what he's talking about and I could kind of, you know, make mental notes in my mind, what I want to ask. And I would tell her and she would ask those questions. And a big plus here, I think, is that she was a woman and well, she is a woman and her feminine energy helped with letting Anderson drop the guard and open up. So thanks, baby. I love you. Once we finished the interview, I think I had around two weeks to kind of go through those questions, you know, get them translated and uh, see if I have a good story structure out of that. And then we started filming again. The good thing here was that I was in Buenos Aires for three months, so I had enough time to really, really kind of go into details with this project. Okay, guys, it's 6.30 a.m. and I'm on my way to the, to the shoot with Anderson. So let's go on the bike today. Riding the streets Buenos Aires in the morning. So good, guys. So we're just having a break. We filmed some morning scenes in the apartment. Anderson getting on the bike. Um, some establishing shots to kind of introduce, you know, where he lives, who is he, what he cares about, and so on. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not really able to film the BTS and at the same time focus on filming the video. So definitely a lesson that next time I need to take someone with me who's gonna film the BTS. But I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna show you the scenes that we filmed and probably do a little voiceover. After the break, we headed into the streets and we are actually extremely lucky because one of the main streets of Buenos Aires was closed that day, uh, closed for traffic. So we had the whole street for us and we could kind of go back and forward and do as much filming as we wanted to. For me, this was the first time I was filming cycling and on a bicycle. So it was a little bit challenging, you know, uh, to kind of drive with one hand and then hold the camera with the other. Uh, luckily, the Lumix has an amazing stabilization, so I was able to get some smooth shots, especially when I slow them, slow them down. And then I also don't mind a little bit of shake. It adds a bit more of dynamism to the, to the overall image. And I think both of us were completely out of our comfort zones, which I really enjoy. So for me, this day was perfect. And we ended it up with a coffee and a little conversation about uh, where, he, where he's heading, what he wants to achieve. Hey guys, so another day, another shooting. Wait, I think my camera is dirty. Okay guys, another day, another shooting with Anderson. And today I'm gonna to be following him on his day uh, when he works as a messenger. So he's gonna be delivering some vegan milks. We are currently in the apartment of Sophie who makes the vegan milks here in Buenos Aires. And he's gonna pick it up and then we're gonna go around Buenos Aires and deliver them. I'm gonna to try to film and get some more of a documentary style footage today. And by the way, filming everything on my Canon FD lenses. This is the 50 millimeter F1.4. And then I have right here, 24 millimeter F2.8. And of course using my Lumix S1. Hey guys, so I'm just having a break. We've been filming for maybe three hours now, going around Buenos Aires with Anderson. He's been delivering uh, the vegan milk today. 
and I just want to kind of reflect on the on the process how it's going so far I think it's going good but it's been quite challenging you know to film uh, him cycling around especially because it's just me I don't have anyone to help me here uh, I don't have a budget to kind of hire a car for every day or a motorbike for every day so filming bikes is quite challenging and especially because I got the fixie two weeks ago so I'm still getting used to riding with only one brake and basically braking when you stop pedaling but it's been a great experience I've been out of my comfort zone I'm really trying to create good looking shots whenever I can that means of course when I'm cycling but mostly when I'm not cycling and when I'm filming you know shots in his apartment and so on and we'll see how the cycling shots will come out we will have a car or a bike uh, or a motorbike for one day so then i think i'll be able to get some some more stable and cinematic shots with that but we'll see it's a learning curve for everyone and i'm really enjoying the process that's the most important Another day, another shooting. Tonight we're shooting in the park uh, and we're shooting a trick night. So all these guys behind me are on their bikes and they're trying different tricks, wheelies and other tricks which I have no idea uh, how they're called. But yeah, we're trying to film this. It's really dark here. And as you can see, the light is not really good because we have these city lamps which are usually very very whitish greenish tone so i don't like that really uh but nothing i can do i don't have enough lights to light this whole scene so gonna work with that gonna create some silhouettes maybe use some rgb lights and some low shutter shots to make it a little bit more dynamic and we'll see how it's gonna come out Hey guys, so now it's 5.30 a.m. in the morning and I'm waiting for Anderson to open up the door because today we're doing some sunrise shooting with the motorbike riding around the city. Uh, so let's see how it goes. So this part of the filming was probably the most challenging and I have absolutely zero BTS out of it. And the reason is I knew I need to get some dynamic shots, you know, some moving shots into the film. And so over the filming period, we were trying to find someone who could help us uh, either with the car or with the motorbike. And then one of Anderson's friends, he offered that he has a motorbike and he can help kind of driving me around and I'll do the filming. So we've met in the morning. Um, and as I said, it was really challenging because the bike was very small and so in order for me to film effectively, I had to sit the other way around. So I was with my back to the driver's back and I had to hold the camera so I couldn't hold myself. What we did was that I had kind of like a belt. So I strapped myself, my body to the body of the driver and that helped with the security a little bit. But there was a lot of moments where I felt like I'm gonna fall off. So I definitely don't recommend this way of filming. If you're gonna be filming cycling, then definitely get a car. I think it's much, much more effective. But in the end, we managed to get some really good shots, the shots that I wanted. And most of the shots actually ended up in the film. So I'm happy that I decided to go for this, even though it was a little bit risky, but it was definitely worth it. Over the period of the next few weeks, we did a couple of shoots with Anderson's friends. We did a shoot in the park. We did a shoot in a mechanic store. Mm, what else we did? We did some solo shoots with him and me, but somehow I stopped documenting everything. I think there was two reasons for that. First of all, I didn't feel comfortable talking in front of the camera in public. And second of all, I was so much focused on the directing and shooting that I just, haven't thought about documenting stuff, which is a shame because I would love to have a bit more vlog style BTS from this, but we did a great job. We got some amazing shots and we bonded even more. I think that was the most important for me that the whole journey was enjoyable rather than, of course, you want to have a great film, but it's the journey and the filming that has to be enjoyable. 
And in this case, it was extremely enjoyable. At the same time, the support that I got or we got from the community was amazing. You know, all of his friends came in when we wanted to film some group shots or when we wanted to visit the mechanic, everyone was open. And so that just made me fall in love even more with the community that they have in Buenos Aires. And as I already said on a few of my posts, this was without a doubt the most fulfilling project of 2022. I really loved the way I approached it, uh, the time I took to immerse myself in the community, and it just showed me how I want to approach my future projects. Basically, it's about spending more, more time with the characters, getting to know them, getting to connect with them, and then making film out of that, rather than making film in two or three days with someone that you've never met before. And so last few words, Maybe if I was kind of sum it up, some of the lessons that I've learned from this and then maybe will be useful for you as well, or you can try to apply them in your future projects. So lesson number one, definitely, make film about characters that you can relate to and that you connect with on a personal level. I think this is extremely important and people don't do it enough. A lot of people just make films because they think that that person is cool or they do something cool, but for me, it doesn't work. I just have to connect with the person on a deeper level. Number two, take time for your projects. You know, you don't need to always go and travel for a, for a few days and then tell a story. Of course, it's possible, but I feel like if you want to create meaningful stories, then you need to immerse yourself and you need to spend time with those characters, getting to know them and then telling their story in a way that ideally they will be proud looking or watching that film after. And a third lesson, definitely find people to collaborate with. On this one, I, I would say I work mostly alone, especially in the filming part. Obviously, there was Anderson. But if I could have another filmmaker with me or a DP and I could direct, then I can imagine that the result would be even better and the process would be much more enjoyable. So definitely create with friends. That's it for this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you also got some knowledge out of it. And if you have any questions, I've actually prepared an Excel sheet. There's a link below in the description to an Excel sheet where you can put your questions. And then I'm thinking about doing like a live Q&A, whether that's going to be on Instagram or here on YouTube, or maybe I'll make a separate video if there will be enough questions. Okay, once again, that's it. And I'll see you next Tuesday with a new video. Peace.